this game suck for me is the fact that it's based off of one of my favorite Disney films and it was made at a time when Disney video games were really hella good. Let me explain to y'all. After the wild success that was Castle of Illusion, Sega decided to pursue another Disney game, again starring Mickey Mouse. This time though, it would be based on one of the company's biggest films. Fantasia was picked due to the fact that Mickey was in it, and because the film had just recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. However, it should be noted that Roy E. Disney, one of the senior execs of the company at the time, had promised Uncle Walt that he would never license the movie to anyone. So what did the lower execs at Disney do when Sega came knocking? Simple. They went behind Roy's back and gave Sega the license without even telling them that the film was off limits. Now, here's where shit really gets interesting. Instead of publishing and developing the game like they did for Castle of Illusion, Sega decided to outsource development to Infogroms. In my opinion, they weren't necessarily the wrong choice, seeing as how they were the guys who made the underrated Rescue the Embassy mission, and would later go on to make that hella sweet Euro platformer the Smurfs. Infograms pulled a stupid though by putting six guys on the project who, get this, had no experience in making console games. That alone was bad enough, but it was only going to get worse for Fantasia. The game was rushed for the Christmas season of 1991, and thus the devs had no time to truly finish it. Fantasia inevitably became a commercial failure upon its release. This tale does have a happy ending, fortunately. Because Sega didn't know about Roy's promise to Walt, and Roy didn't know about what happened while he wasn't looking, the two companies came to a win-win agreement. Sega would recall all unsold copies of the game and would then promptly destroy them, and Disney, in return, would give additional Disney licenses to Sega at no further cost. Still, the game was on the market for well over 50 days before it was completely pulled and an estimated 5,000 copies had been sold. Agreed. So let's start with the most noticeable issue, the god-awful music. Boy howdy and I thought the music in Dark Castle was bad. Which, you know, it still is. But that was just one classical song being butchered. Fantasia, the movie, showcased roughly eight classical pieces of music. Now, all eight of those songs are in the game, but here's the thing. All eight songs are mutilated to bejesus and back. I'll give you folks a few examples. Here's The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Here's Dance of the Hours. And finally, here's Rite of Spring. They all sound like something a junior high school kid would have made for his music class on an Apple II computer. In 1984, Another shitty thing about the music is that all of it amounts to several cut-up 30-second loops of the eight original songs. For instance, one level will have one part of, let's just say, the Nutcracker Suite, while the next level will have the other part. Why not just put the entire song in, the, in a level? They're all long enough, so why the fuck not? Now, I know there's going to be someone out there who will say, well, the Genesis didn't have that good of a sound processor. The music was always going to suck. Counter-argument, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. That title was able to translate MJ's music quite well to the Genesis, so if that game could do it, then so could a Fantasia. platformer 
or jumping on an enemy typically results in that enemy being defeated. The same is true for Fantasia, only one thing. You have to press down before making contact or else you take damage. No, I'm not joking. I know that sounds asinine as hell, but it's true. While jumping on an enemy, you must press down or Mickey gets hurt. You know, that's an issue I've never come across before, probably because this issue was fixed in 1985 with Super Mario Bros. Now, you do have another method of attack, magic spells, which would have been cool. They could have made Fantasia like Mega Man, but unfortunately the spells are hella limited, and the pickups for them are rare. I know this sounds like a minor problem, but no, it's actually really fucked because you don't have momentary invincibility after getting hit. An enemy can kill Mickey in seconds, so you have to play correctly if you don't want to die. As far as I'm concerned, these two problems alone are enough to make the game virtually unplayable in its vanilla state. This is why Shasta and I say that Fantasia is mostly untested. No platformer worth a damn would be released like this. I should admit, while getting footage for this review, I cheated so that I could show more of the game other than just the first two levels. I felt justified in doing such not just because of the two aforementioned problems, but because years ago, this game stole a weekend from me when I rented it once. While we're still on the subject of jumping, getting from one platform to another has to be precise or else you'll fall through and die. <laughs> you know, I've come to believe that anally precise platforming is a staple of bad platformers. In fact, I'd be surprised if this game didn't have this perfectly fucked feature. Seriously though, it's just another glowing example of the bad programming that's everywhere in Fantasia. I know what y'all might be thinking, one of the major issues has to be the fact that the game only had six guys working on it. To which I would agree because most games developed during the fourth generation had teams of around 15 to 30 people. But here's the thing, in 1994 a game called Mr. Nuts was released and it only had four people working on it. It's a hell of a fun game and to me it goes to show that you don't necessarily need a big team to make a good game. You just need to have guys who know what the fuck they're doing. Therein lies the problem with Fantasia's shitty platforming. After digging a little deeper into this game's history, I found out that the devs mostly made titles for the Amiga computer. Also, they created more strategy games, not platformers. Right. I'm nearly certain that there's a half second lag between what I do on my controller and what Mickey does in the game. It may not seem like much, but in the heat of gameplay, it can throw you off a bit. Just makes it that much harder to do damn near anything. Now, I'll be honest, Dark Castle has worse delayed controls because in that, the delay was a full second. I can't overstate this enough though. Laggy controls, even slightly, is an instant bad mark on a game. You can get used to it, sure, but it ultimately brings the experience down. Fortunately, unlike Dark Castle, the controls are not confusing. Well, that's at least one good thing going for Fantasia. The controls might be delayed, but at least it's not a total pain in the ass to get a hang of. Not that that makes Fantasia any better to play. Speaking of enemies, even they have problems. 
This is where you can really tell how shit the programming is in this game. The bad guys, a vast majority of them, have no definitive movement patterns. It's all random. One minute, an enemy will be walking back and forth like normal, the next they'll suddenly start doing something else. Now, it might not seem like such a big problem. Y'all might even say that I could just forgo killing all the enemies. I would do that, if I didn't also have to look for the music notes. More on that later, but let's just say you have to kill enemies in order to find some of these things. Yet again, it just makes it that much more difficult to play because the enemies can randomly change their trajectory. You know, when I play a good platformer, like Decap Attack for instance, I don't have to worry about the NPCs doing retarded ass stuff. It's as if the lone tester for Fantasia was paid in peanuts, so he simply didn't give a fuck. Though judging how the game is, I wouldn't be surprised if that were actually true. to do with the technical issues of Fantasia, so let's talk about some of the physical. Like how the level designs are all crappy as hell. In my review of Awesome Possum, I said that the level designs were bad, but that was only because the main character was too fast and the levels were created for exploration. In this game, however, the stage layouts are legitimately bad. No joke, they're friggin' horrible. These are the kind of levels where if they were handed in as a school project, they would get an immediate F for laziness. It's like the guys who made all these stages were amateurs, and this was their first attempt at game designing. I know that sounds harsh, but the devs were professionals. I could get behind these levels if Fantasia were released on a second gen machine, like the VIC-20, or perhaps even the ColecoVision, but totally not on a fourth gen machine like the Mega Drive. This is unacceptable. Levels are quintessential for platformers, and probably more so than for any other genre. What really makes these levels suck is that they're basic as shit, but filled to the breaking point with enemies. Also, stuff in the foreground can sometimes block your vision. Okay, on paper, foreground graphics in a platformer sounds cool, but in practice, it's not. All it does is obstruct your view from potential enemies and items. Like I said, amateurish first attempt at real game design. Granted, that one at least let you finish levels without having to get a certain number of collectibles. Hidden in all the levels, there are music notes that Mickey has to get. If he doesn't have enough at the end of a third level, he has to repeat the three previous levels all over again. I tell you what, folks, there's nothing that can piss off a gamer more than having to collect a bunch of meaningless crap to move forward. Now, that's not to say this feature or rather its derivative, doesn't work. There are games that are built around this kind of thing, like Donkey Kong 64 or Spyro the Dragon, but here's the key difference between those games and Fantasia. It's actually fun and challenging to collect the collectibles in DK64 and in Spyro. In Fantasia, it's just tedious. Also, for many of these music notes to appear in the first place, you have to kill a bunch of enemies. Some of the notes are out in the open, but a good portion are carried by enemies. Makes me wonder how the devs expected anyone to play this without wanting to smash their face through the TV. fed up playing this now, so I'm going to start wrapping it up and go through the only nice things I have to say about Fantasia. Be forewarned, I'm grasping at straws here. The visuals in this game are nice to look at. 
Sorta. Okay, the graphics are actually nothing special, but at least everything looks as it should. Also, despite the levels being way too linear and crammed with enemies, they look like the scenes from the film, so that's neat. Another good thing about Fantasia is that it's graciously short. Not that that really saves it in the long run, because once you beat the game, you're treated to one of the most boring endings in video game history. No, seriously, this ending is on par with the NES Back to the Future games ending. It's not the worst Genesis game I've ever played, Dark Castle still holds that title, but it's a mighty close second. Pretty much everything that could have gone wrong with this title did go wrong. But do y'all want to know what the worst part is? It's the fact that Fantasia was rushed. Today with video games, that's not such a problem seeing as that there's patches and whatnot. There really wasn't such a thing back in the day, especially on a console. Back then, if a game was released unfinished, it was sure to suck, and Fantasia is a great example. It's like playing a beta test. It's almost finished, but there's still quite a bit of work to be done. I think if the devs were given more time to get familiar with the Genesis hardware and how to make a platformer, maybe Fantasia would have turned out playable. Though in saying that, perhaps it was cursed to be bad. I'm not what you would call a superstitious person, but considering the fact that Mr. Disney himself didn't want his movie to be licensed, makes me believe that there might have been something going on beyond the grave. No surprise, Fantasia the game gets an H for horrendous. It's a janky, incomplete, and virtually unplayable wreck of a game. Do yourself a favor, and don't play it. a good game now. Shas and I will be back soon. Until then, farewell for now, folks.